Sean Wall his rookie year. He lost eight games from high school to college. John Wall, in tears, in tears, crying. He lost 25 games in ain't December yet. He asked me, say, oh, gee, is it going to get any better? I looked him in the face, like, come on, I'm going to let me say, no. <laughs> it's going to be bad next year, too. When Sam Cassell was telling the story about John Wall, the first person that came to my mind, no lie, was Victor Wembanyama. I'm not showing y'all this picture of him crying to make fun of him or to troll him. It's actually commendable. And I said this when I was reviewing the game that France lost to America, that he was crying to show me how much he actually cared and thought that he was going to win. And so when I hear the story of John Wall coming to tears uh, with Sam Cassell, I'm seeing Wemin Yama crying on the court after this game. This man is passionate. He cares. He really wants to win. Kenny the Jet Smith from inside the NBA, he was telling a very similar story about how losing could affect you. And they were telling the story because the topic was Victor Wembanyama himself. And they were saying how, man, the losing could be psychologically really getting to him. When you come into the NBA, you're not used to losing this much games at one period of time. He brought up the example of all the games he lost throughout college, high school. You get to the NBA. Now you're losing a lot more than you ever did throughout your whole life. I was trying to find the clip for y'all so you could hear how similar the conversation was between inside the NBA talking about Victor Wembanyama and this conversation that Sam Cassell was having with Draymond Green about John Wall. It's somewhere out there moving along though. Yes, I know it's still early. Victor Wembanyama just finished his rookie season. It's not like he had several years of losing year after year. You got to give them a chance. I get all of that. But it got to be sooner rather than later that they really put a team around this guy and get things going especially since his personality is so focused on winning and i have another clip here that you can see to put this in perspective how much he really wants to make his name known and become a great player i, I just feel like i'm immune to like the things people try to tell me oh pay attention to this or watch out you know all the bad things like uh you know distractions or, or, yeah distractions exactly like partying and, you know like alcohol drugs whatever like why would, why would I ever do You're that? You're just so focused on mm -hmm. what it is that you desire. Yeah. And also, I don't have nothing to compensate for. That speaks volumes, man. He's telling y'all, look, I don't know why there's people out there trying to warn me about distractions and this and that. I'm immune to that. I'm not going to let myself fall to everything out there that could really mess up this opportunity that I have. Here's another quote when he was just drafted where he said, in this past month, I think basketball wasn't even 50% of my schedule. I can't stand it. I know it's a special moment in my life, but I'm glad it's over. I just want to hoop. This is him fresh out of the draft, number one pick. He's saying that all of the media and all of the attention that's going around is taken away from the game. He don't even care about that. Right now, let's get into the San Antonio Spurs and coaching the roster and what's going on with them and what they could do to really make sure that this attitude is matched with a winning atmosphere and the first step in doing so is getting a guy like a chris paul his personality mesh it with the desire that victim women yama has that should be a great combination as an older player giving a younger player game and they both have that fire inside of them to really win and more importantly they needed a point guard man there was a lot of times i was watching the spurs and Victor was open on a few plays or if you really were watching the game, you could see if you make that extra pass here or really give it to him in this position, it's an easy layup, easy dunk. And it looked like they literally just looked past him. They ran the play, did something else or got a harder basket, made it a lot more complicated when Victor was right there for a much easier shot or the ability to make one. As I go through the Spurs roster, I like Devin Vassell at the two guard. I believe he has a lot of potential to be a really good scorer in the NBA. We'll see how he continues to progress. It is interesting since they drafted Stephen Castle, who is another shooting guard and somebody who has potential as well. We'll see how all of that intertwines with them both at the same position. I should also mention that Keldon Johnson is listed as a small forward slash shooting guard. He's 6'5", though. So to me, he's really a two guard. Yeah, that position is a little bit crowded, to say the least. They may have to move one of those pieces in the near future. I like Jeremy Sokan a lot, too. He already has all the keys to be a great defensive player. He's 21. If he gets an offensive bag, put some score into that, some playmaking, oh, that's a really, really intriguing piece that they have as well. 
So the Spurs have pieces. At this point, it's about the structure and the order of how it's all going to fit around Victor Wembanyama. This gets into another portion of the clip Sam Cassell was talking about in relation to John Wall and him not necessarily believing that the Wizards had a championship team based on what they had around them. You can hear for yourself. Absolutely. You got to keep working. If you don't, if you stop working with this, this can get real, real bad. You're the number one pick in the draft now. You're the number one pick in the draft. And the city of DC thinks that you're going to bring a title to this city. But the owners did. I didn't think that. I knew that he needed more pieces. Greg Popovich signed a five year extension last year. I'm looking at this team now as four years left to really put all of this together and see where it's going. If that doesn't happen four years down the road, they're still not really even a playoff team or barely one to begin with. This is where it's going to really get scary. You can see a Victor being displeased, unhappy. I would assume, again, just based on his personality and what direction the Spurs are going in. If Greg Popovich doesn't end up coming back after those four years. My question to y'all and specifically Spurs fans, do you see this becoming a championship team based on what's happening right now with these pieces? Would you be somebody like Sam Cassell who's looking at the roster and saying, I don't believe this? Or do you feel like the opposite? No, we got everything that is needed. We're going in the right direction. We just need a little bit more time to make this all work. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know your opinion. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, salute for listening. Peace. And may I add, since y'all made it this far in the video, to check out the Amazon link in the description, the Kobe Bryant mama mentality. This video was themed around Victor's mentality itself. It probably mirrors what Kobe Bryant does and what made him successful, if you ask me. There's the Amazon link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. All right, man, we out.